Planting a single tree might seem like a small gesture, but here in Rwanda, even the seemingly significant can spark remarkable transformation. Join me as we explore the incredible story of Rwanda's environmental comeback. This journey will take us from the ashes of despair to a vibrant tapestry of life, a testament to the unwavering spirit of a nation that dared to dream green again. After the genocide against the Tutsi, with peace and security established, many Rwandans returned back home. But their return came with challenges. They were in need of land for resettlement and agriculture. This resulted in deforestation, land degradation, and biodiversity loss. The once vibrant Akajira National Park and the former Jishkwati and Mukura Natural Forests were among the parks and forests that suffered. This degradation led to droughts in the eastern part of Rwanda and contributed to flooding and landslides in the northern part of Rwanda. But with visionary leadership and determination to partner with nature, the country embarked on a mission to put the environment at the heart of everything it does. To achieve its bold vision, Rwanda needed the right policy frameworks and environmental management institutions. That's why, in 2003, the country introduced a new Rwandan constitution safeguarding the right to a clean environment. This was followed by the establishment of the Rwanda Environment Management Authority, REMA, in 2006. In 2011, Rwanda made history by pledging to restore 2 million hectares of deforested and degraded land by 2020, a bold commitment that set the stage for change. The country began massive afforestation, land management and registration, as well as construction of decent plant settlements known as green villages. To learn more, I traveled to Yuchumbi district and met Shuaez. She's now living in the Kaniga Climate Resilient Settlement, a model village constructed by the Green Yuchumbi Project. <laughs> Joyez's story is one of thousands across the country and demonstrates the country's commitment to protecting its environment and improving the lives of citizens. Through the Bone Challenge, Rwanda started a border-to-border -border restoration journey. In 2019, Rwanda had achieved 30.4% of its land area covered with forests. One area of focus for restoration is Amayaga in the southern province. The region is highly vulnerable to climate change due to degradation and destruction of its landscapes. Rwanda 
nubwo wenda tukavuga ngo ntabwo biragira gukura cyane ariko hari impinduka byatanze Forest restoration efforts were undertaken hand in hand with wildlife conservation. In 2015, lions were introduced in Akajira National Park. In 2017, rhinos made their return as well. Rwanda became home to the Big Five once more. Significant efforts have been made to ensure people can live in harmony with nature. And today, the communities living around Rwanda's national parks are champions for conservation. In the western province, restoration efforts have brought the Jishkwati and Mukura natural forests back to life. And today, the landscape is protected as Rwanda's newest national park. In 2020, UNESCO recognized the park as a biosphere reserve, a sanctuary for life. Today, the park is a shining example for the power of community-led conservation. The same focus on restoration revived Rujezi wetland, and in 2006, the wetland was designated as a Ramsar site, meaning it is of international significance. In Kigali, as well as secondary cities, the government of Rwanda is creating green spaces as well as car free zones. Young professionals like Ivan and other residents of the city use the places to relax and connect with friends and nature without having to leave the city. I am so glad we have spaces like this car-free zone in the heart of Kigali. As a young professional, it's important to have clean green spaces like this to relax and recharge. It not only promotes a healthier lifestyle, but also contributes to reducing pollution and improving our environment. Speaking of green spaces in Kigali, Nyandungu wetland had become degraded. It had lost much of its biodiversity. In 2016, Rwanda began transforming these natural valuable assets into a recreational and educational park. It is now serving as a blueprint for five more wetlands which are being restored around the city of Kigali. One of those wetlands is in Jikondo, where engineer Samson is coordinating rehabilitation activities. <laughs> Rwanda's nature restoration efforts have inspired even greater action in the journey towards a greener and more sustainable future. From 2004, Rwanda said no to plastic carry bags and later, single-use plastics. No one believed it would be possible, but it worked, and the world took note. That's why the country would be among the first to call for an international plastics treaty to put an end to plastic pollution by 2040. And it did stop there. In 2017, the country opened the first state-of-the-art e-waste recycling facility in the region with the capacity to process 10,000 tons of e-waste every year. Not only is this protecting the health of Rwanda, but it has also created green jobs for young people. As the threat of climate change grows, every nation needs to play its part. In 2020, Rwanda became the first country in Africa to submit its revised climate action plan. Rwanda set an ambitious goal to reduce emissions by 38% by 2030 and become carbon neutral and climate resilient by 2050. But how will the country achieve this impressive target? The answer is simple, through climate resilient agriculture, smart mobility, and clean energy. Rwanda is leading the e-mobility revolution in Africa. Electric cars and motorcycles are transforming transportation in this city, reducing air pollution and the need for fossil fuels. And speaking of energy, in 2014, the country switched on an 8.5 megawatt solar plant in the eastern province, which is now powering 15,000 homes. The plant has 28,000 panels arranged in the shape of Africa and was the first large-scale commercial solar field to be constructed in East Africa. In urban areas, rooftop solar powers homes, offices, schools, and hospitals. Even remote villages now can access electricity thanks to solar microgrids. In just 30 years, Rwanda has been transformed 
and is an inspiration for many around the world. This is the result of Rwanda's visionary leadership that has put people at the heart of environmental conservation. Rwanda remains committed to inclusive and transparent negotiations for a green and climate resilient future. By ensuring a green and healthy environment for all Rwandans, investing in reforestation and climate resilience, promoting biodiversity restoration, banning single-use plastics, embracing e-mobility and harnessing clean energy. Rwanda is proving that sustainability is not just a trend, it's a future that we all share.